Some days in the workshop are better than others, and some of the best days are when a bunch of cardboard boxes arrive full of new tools. And inside these cardboard boxes is a brand new Tag mill, so I'm itching to get them unpacked, so let's get to it. So yes, I bought a Tag mill to make small robot parts, and there are many mills on the market, but this one is now mine, so I want to take 30 seconds just to explain why I chose this mill, and also I want to tell you the story of the CNC Dickens, so you can avoid them in the future. When you're looking to buy a CNC, try and take into account the following things. While we know the CNC you dream of is all the way up here, your current skill level might be down here. About here we'll plot the biggest CNC that fits into your garage space. The other line we need to draw is what's your budget? Budget includes the money you need to purchase the machine, to purchase fixturing, motors, controllers, and everything you need to make that machine work. When we've taken into account these points, the CNC that you actually need right now probably lays around here. Now there's a complete bastard in this picture, one that lives on lost confidence and questioned decisions. The people that will come along as soon as you make a decision and say things like, if you just spent 3,000 more you could have had a Grizzly, or 10,000 more you could have had a Tormac. These people we call the CNC Dick <coughs> Dickens. If you have confidence in your research and conviction in your decisions, then don't let a complete Dickens change your mind. So now we know how not to be a Dickens. I ordered the Tag 5019CR mill, which is the ball screw version of the Tag mill, and it also is CNC ready. So you can bolt some motors on there and get the computer to do all the hard work for us, and that is in these two large boxes here. I also have a box with some Saunders Machine Works fixture plates. I've got a box with a tool setting probe and a few other things besides. So let's start opening some boxes. So safety first, before we start handling some knives, I'm gonna put some gloves on. Box one of two. In this box we have, looks like, the spindle assembly, so that's the Z-axis. See the point here at which it rotates, because you can do angle cuts if you want to. Let's move the Z-axis out of the way. It's bolted to a piece of wood, so let's open this box. So in here is the motor for the spindle. Now we're ready to lift the Z-axis out. So you can see the Z-axis is bolted there and there to this piece of wood. Then we're going to have to take the bolts out. Interesting, so one last bolt right in the rotating plate there. Okay. Here's the z-axis here. See the switch to turn the spindle on. This is the rotating column. Here's the collet. Or well, at least the call it nut. There is the pulley for the spindle. End of the z-axis ball screw, so we'll clean that up in a minute. All right, let's get to box two. Some Trader Joe's bags. Starting to see the table up here. Looks like a bag of stuff. Save that for later. This is bolted down somewhere, so we're going to have a look around for some bolts. So we've got a belt and collets in here, so we'll open that in a moment. So we have a bolt down here, and it looks like a bolt down here. We have... So we have our XY axis here. Ball screws looking beautiful. Here's our Z axis. You can see the rotating column piece here. Bolts on over here. Those ball screws are absolutely beautiful. So next we have this little box here. What's inside it? Mill vice with crank handle. Some more newspaper. Where do you even get newspaper in this day and age? Being from England, this is what we used to get our fish and chips in. I live in America now, so I can't get a decent chip body to save my life. That looks like the bench mill vice handle. So we've got some collets. I was actually wondering if it would come with collets. Website isn't particularly easy to see everything that comes with it And that's one of the reasons I wanted to shoot this video for you because I wanted you to see what this machine came with I actually think for the money. It's a heck of a deal for most people to get started Obviously nothing metric and we'll hold my tongue on metric for the moment So this is the belt subject of much debate with people that actually have teagues work with teagues Tags. It's very thin. 
but people make very good parts on these tags, so gotta believe it's well engineered. The spindle upgrade is one of the first things people do. That is the very basic vise that you get. So that fits up here, helps us hold our parts. Now we have this bag to open. So what's in here? So inside of here, it looks like we have our CNC ready mounts, so there we go. This is what we'll eventually mount our NEMA 23 motors to. These, actually either way. These go over here, pretty tight tolerance. We'll be very careful because actually inside of here is our shaft coupler. Mounts to the end of our axis and the other end clamps onto our motor. So the contents of that bag when all said and done were three motor mounts, three shaft couplers, curiously four bolts, but these are pretty easy to miss actually in the packaging, so I'm sure they wanted to provide an extra one just in case. And this, so this says, got 12 pieces, three quarter of an inch long with a diagonal on each and to fit into the motor couplers. So curiously, no instructions. Now, admittedly, they could be somewhere inside that mountain of paper. And actually, you can already see ball screws are very easy to turn. All right, let's get a closer look. Let's take a breath for a moment. I just want to show you the size of this mill. So just to bring this into scale, this is everybody's favorite sugar water. So that gives you an idea of the size of the parts you're going to make. This isn't a huge mill. It's meant to be a small mill to get you started relatively cheaply. And I'm going to be using this to make small aluminum robot parts. So this is perfect for me, but I want you to get a feel for the scale here. You're not going to be buying a Tormac 1100 for $1,800. Next thing I've got to unpack is the Saunders fixture plate. So in here we have the Saunders Machine Works two-piece vise. These are the screws that bite into the workpiece to hold it on the jaws. I have to say Saunders Machine Works do an incredible job. This fixture plate is spectacular. As a mirror fin finish, <coughs> I actually see myself in it. So this will become the fixture plate that I can mount on my work to. You tend to get one of these because you hold your work to this plate. And then if you crash the mill, it's going to go into the fixture plate rather than ruining an $1,800 mill. Although I will say if it went through this mirror finish, I'd probably cry anyway. But the jaws attached to this plate and then along these channels, these vice jaw grip nuts sit and they hold onto your workpiece in the middle. You can set this up for the work you're doing. And actually, if you can fit them, you can put multiple uh, pieces of work on there and you can have different offsets. And then you can mill multiple parts in one go. So what it enables you to do is actually have two or three fixture plates as well. And then you can have work holding ready to go for the parts that you're gonna make. So if I'm making robot parts, then I can set them up on different fixture plates. These are $100 a piece. So I can set everything up ready to go. I can pull the fixture plate out, attach it to the machine, hone the machine and get going. And I can mill them out without having to go through too much trouble of clamping down the work and moving things around to get going. I mentioned in my video earlier on that there is more than just the machine if you want to invest in a CNC mill. I also purchased a touch setter probe so I can do quick and easy tool changes. So this will be attached to the machine or the fixture plate. And what happens is the tool will come down and it will press and the machine will detect that it's pressed and it will actually be able to understand the difference in length between one tool and another. And that means that I'll be able to change tools very quickly and very easily. You can see over here as well, there's a nozzle and you attach air to this and it means that when the touch probe comes, is when the tool comes on the touch probe, it blows the chips off the end of the tool and that keeps it clean so you've got no debris that's skewing your accuracy. 
So in order to turn the mill into a CNC mill, one of the things you're going to need is motors. There's some NEMA 23 motors here. I'll provide the link in the description. So next I have the controls. So inside of here is a Gecko Tech G540 motor controller. It's got four motor outputs. It allows me to control the motors and the limit switches. And they also have a power supply inside of this box. I have an e-stop on the front, which is a really important feature of any set of controls. You can stop the machine safely when you have a problem. And to connect this to the computer, I actually have something that I made. So this is an Arduino Uno hooked up to a PCB that I actually designed. And this lets me hook a DB25 up to the Uno and the DB25 goes into the control unit and I can actually use Garble, G-R-B-L, Garble, to control the CNC machine straight from the computer via USB. This is a very cheap way to get started. There are control units out there. You can spend $400 before you've really moved. Just get in the G540 to talk to a Mac 3 or Mac 4. I'm going to use Garble. I'm going to use Universal G-Code Sender because it's cheap and it gets me going really easy. So this just plugs straight in. I'm probably going to sell these boards on my website for about 25 bucks if anyone is interested. And that means that you'll be able to do what I did, just plug a Gecko Tech controller straight into the DB25 on here, slap that on the top of the Uno, plug it in by USB, and off you go. Cool. Well, that sets up the next video nicely. We have a table full of stuff and we're going to turn it into a working mill. It's my hope that this video perhaps helped you as you start going down your milling journey. I think the Tag Mill makes a really good place to start. It's a small mill. You can reach out and touch everything that's going on. It's not surrounded by a giant cabinet, you know, insulated from what's happening. It's a good place to start to learn. It's also very cheap. There's no giant price tag to stop you from getting involved. That's really important. So don't let any CNC Dickens talk you out of it. This is a good place to start. I hope you join me next time. We'll get this thing put together and we'll start making chips. If you don't want to miss us putting all this together, then hit the subscribe button. Perhaps leave me a like or a comment if you've got some feedback. And I guess with that, we'll see you next time.